now that you understand how the indoctrination series functions, I want to kind of walk you through an example uh, indoctrination series, and in particular, uh, a, a welcome mail, the first part of that indoctrination series, and then show you how you would deploy um, some of the other uh, some of the other messages in an indoctrination series. So remember, a typical indoctrination series is three emails, okay? Three emails. And the first email in this series is this one, the perfect welcome mail. And you should have this uh, inside your members area so you can follow along. I'm just going to walk through kind of the different parts and stages and how this functions and really how you can edit it um, for yourself. So three emails in a typical indoctrination series. Message one is the perfect welcome mail. And then message two and three is going to be some type of content, and I'll show you how that's going to work in just a second when I get to the PS of this mail. So, message number one, you're basically just going to say, welcome to whatever your website is, whatever your newsletter is called, and then you're telling them, here's where to start. Now, this is important because anytime someone joins a list for the first time, that's the first question everybody asks. Where should I start? Where do I begin? So you're answering it in the subject line. You're telling them right there in the subject line, we're welcoming you and telling you where to begin. Now, the basic structure of this welcome email is just that. You're going to say, welcome and thank you. Okay? You're going to tell them, welcome and thank you. You're going to say, here's, what's, here's what to do next. And then you're going to give some instructions. You're going to give them a step-by-step -step and, uh, and, and tell them, like, what's going to come next. So, uh, welcome and thank you. Um, here's what to expect. And then some basic instructions. Welcome and thank you. What to expect. Here's some instructions. So, watch as we go along and show you those different parts. This first part is pretty simple. You're just saying, hello and welcome. We're doing exactly what our moms told us to do, right? Which is when you meet somebody, you know, smile, shake their hand and say hello and introduce yourself, right? So that's what we're doing. You know, hi, my name is this. And I do recommend that this email come from a person. It shouldn't come from management or customer support. It should come from a person, ideally the face of the company, you know, the CEO, uh, someone who is the outward face of a company. And don't think that just because your brand is really big that there shouldn't be a face to your company. Um, Bill Gates, for a very long time, was the face of Microsoft. They're a massive company. Same with Steve Jobs at Apple. You know, you see the same thing with Jeff Bezos at, at, uh, at Amazon, Tony Shea at Zappos. Um, most of these companies, uh, for better or worse in some cases, are going to have a face. Heck, even Kentucky Fried Chicken had Colonel Sanders, right? So they're all going to have a face, and I recommend that this be signed by someone, okay? Even if they don't know who you are, it's always more compelling to, to start a relationship with a person and not with a company. So, hi, my name is your name and your title, um, and then company website, right? You're just telling them, welcome to the family, we're really grateful you decided to join us. It's going to be a game changer. Now we get into part two. So this is the hello and welcome. Now we get into part two. What to expect. Here's what you can expect. And this is where you want to tell them exactly how often you're going to be following up with them, how often you're going to be emailing them. A lot of folks say, wow, Ryan, I'm surprised that you're able to email your list in some of your markets every single day, and they don't get upset by it. Well, they don't get upset by it because we tell them this is a daily newsletter. You're going to get content every single day. And so, and we tell them not just when they subscribe, but we tell them in this initial email. So if they've got a problem with it, they can, they'll find out here and they can, you know, go and either unsubscribe or change their subscription uh, details. But you want to be very transparent with it from the beginning. And you want to tell them, you know, when, uh, when you're going to be following up with them, when you're going to be sending out emails. Okay. You also want to acknowledge the fact that you're going to be sending them stuff from third-party resources, right? And that's what we say here. We're going to be sending affiliate offers, promotions, things like that, maybe even some advertisements. We don't sell your list, but we might, you know, tell you about some stuff that we like that's, you know, not related to our company. Um, all right. So we did the hello and welcome. We did what to expect. Now we're getting into what you need to do next, what to get started, the step-by-step. -step. So the first step, we ask people to whitelist us, okay? Whitelist us. We want to make sure that, we, that they get our emails. And I've got a link here to our whitelist page at Digital Marketer. If you want to model yours after ours, this has been an effective one. We give some additional, you know, whitelisting instructions to make sure that they can receive it. Now, this is important. Not only does this whitelisting step here um, in, improve deliverability because they're whitelisting you, also the mere act of them going through the steps is going to make them more likely to open your emails. I'm going to say that again because it's really important. The mere act of them going through these steps makes them more likely to open your emails. 
Okay, and the reason is is because they're showing commitment and consistency, right? If I'm going to jump through a bunch of hoops to whitelist this person, well, obviously I must really respect them. Obviously I must really, you know, want to hear what they have to say. Well, they're doing all this stuff before they've really even heard what you have to say. So it's just classic commitment and consistency, and that's why this really helps. Uh, in step two, we're going to ask them to follow us on Facebook and, and, uh, and, and Twitter and, and LinkedIn, whatever relevant social media properties you have. And again, not only does this get, not only does this get them following you in more places and, and give you additional opportunities to communicate with them, just the act of them following these steps, you know, going through, following you on Facebook, you know, liking you on Facebook, following you on Twitter. Um, and also this optional step here, again, if you have a face to your company, have them like the face of that company too, right? The more the merrier. Um, you shouldn't do this though unless you're actually going to respond, okay? Unless you're actually going to engage. Like for me, a digital marketer, I engage, I respond, and, and so it's good to do. Okay, so those were the three steps of the welcome email. They come through, hello and welcome, what to expect, here's what to do next. All of that builds the indoctrination uh, because it because they're moving around. They're bouncing around to all these different places. Frankly, they're doing what you tell them to do. And when someone does what someone else tells them to do, then that other person is an authority. Okay, so when they follow these steps, even they're tiny little micro commitments, you are becoming an authority in their life. They are proving through their actions, okay? They're proving through their actions that your opinion matters, that your brand is important. All right, so even before you've really fully indoctrinated them yet into who you are and what you're about, they're already following you, and that's good. All right, so that's the first email in an indoctrination series. Emails two and three are all about content, and at this point, you have a choice. If you create your own content, right, if you have a blog or something like that, then I recommend that you send two emails with uh, – three pieces of content, okay? The first email that would go out on the, the very next day, you know, tomorrow, basically, if this email goes out on a Monday, for example, somebody signs up on a Monday, they get the perfect welcome email, then on Tuesday, they're going to get email number two. Send them really what you believe is your best piece of content, like your absolute best piece of content. Send that the next day, and then use this PS. And then on day three, the, you know, the, the next, go ahead and send them an email that highlights two pieces of content. Now, the reason we, I like to do two in the third email is one, it, it gets your uh, indoctrination series from, you know, what would be four messages down to three. So it tightens it up a little bit, makes it a little more efficient. But the other thing that you're doing is you're over delivering. You know, you're telling them, I'm going to tell you three, they're expecting it to take three days. And instead of it only takes two days. Okay. So highlight pick, what are your three best pieces of content and, to, and send out two emails basically saying, okay, you know, as promised, here's the content that I was going to send you. It's this blog post. It's this YouTube video. They, they shouldn't necessarily all be blog posts, right? Again, bounce them over to different properties. Send them over to your blog to, watch, to, to consume the first one. Send them to YouTube to consume another one. Uh, send them, you know, maybe to SlideShare, somewhere else to consume another one. But mix it up. Get them bouncing around to a lot of different places. That, that act of bouncing around to all these other locations, again, that also increases intimacy. Those are, those are little micro commitments. So, that's how you would do it if you have your own content and you want to send them off to some of your best stuff. That's why this is called a best of PS. So if you want to go that direction and you're going to send them your best stuff, then that's what you could do. Well, what if you don't have, uh, what, what if you don't have your own content, right? You're not doing as much content marketing. You don't have your own content. Well, then you would run what we call a bonding series. Okay. A bonding series and a bonding series is designed to do just what the name would suggest, to bond you or your brand to them, to, to show them some things that maybe they hadn't heard from before, to tell some jokes. So what we're doing here, I like to lead off or, or end a bonding series with like a little riddle, right? Do you know the number one reason why? So when we were in the writer's market, do you know the number one reason to write a book, right? If you're in the real estate, do you know the number one, uh, do you know why most real estate agents charge 3% commissions? You know, do you know why 95% of all businesses fail? So insert a riddle, tell them a little story, right? I invoke some narrative. What you're doing here is you're building up their curiosity, right? You're building up the curiosity. You're telling them, I bet it's not what you think. And then you're opening a loop by saying, I'll give you the answer tomorrow. Okay. I'll give you the answer tomorrow. So even if they think they know what the answer is, they're still going to tune in to see what happens tomorrow. This is a cliffhanger. 
right? This is opening a loop. This is a cliffhanger. This is this is opening a loop. Now, in the email the next day, you can go ahead and, and resolve this. And then what I like to do in a bonding series is I like to show them some content that I like. Not necessarily in the best of, right? Best of was you're showing them your your best content or your brand's best content. In a bonding series, you might just go and find a really interesting TED talk that is meaningful to you and that you think will be meaningful to new subscribers, right? You might find an interesting news article, okay? So the bonding series is all about, it's still about content, it's still about giving value in advance, but it's about giving content and value in advance that number one, you didn't necessarily create, but that can bond you to your new subscribers in a meaningful and in an emotional way because it's relevant to them. Okay, so you're picking out content that you believe will be relevant to them, either humorous, uh, informative, or inspiring. Okay, make them laugh, you know, make them cry, make them say, ooh, wow. Um, and, and just go in and finding really cool YouTube videos. I'm sure you see this. What types of things would you pass around to your friends? You know, what are some interesting jokes that have been sent around? Show a little bit of your personality. Show a little bit of personality. Show, show them some pictures. Increase that bonding because it's important to think. When... You send someone a great piece of content when you forward on a meaningful, uh, you know, a meaningful piece of content. Like I said, whether it be informative or entertaining, then they're going to thank you. Just in the same way, where if you and I were having a conversation, I found out that you were really, really interested in, you know, schnauzers or kite surfing, right? If if I found out that you were really interested in that, and I saw an interesting article in a magazine, if I tore out that article and I brought that article to you and I said, hey, I remember you saying that you liked schnauzers and that you saying that you like kite surfing. So, you know, here you go. I found this article and I got it for you. You're not going to write a letter to the person who wrote the article thanking them. You're going to thank me. You're going to thank me because I thought of you. I found it. I thought of you and I brought it to you, right? It's the thought that counts. And the bonding series is all about that. It's a thought that counts. You know, no, you're not necessarily building authority by showing them your content, which is a benefit that you get with the best of, you're just showing them, hey, um, I know who you are, I'm the same, I saw this, I think you'll like it too. And if they do, then that's where you get to build up a little bit of bonding. So whether you show them your content in the context of a best of series, or where you show them someone else's content that just happens to be meaningful in a bonding series, you're going to follow up the perfect welcome mail with two emails, okay, two emails that send people off to consume content that is meaningful, either yours or someone else's, either you're building authority in the case of a best of or building, um, you know, intimacy and emotion in the case of a bonding series. But that is a basic indoctrination mail. Once you've done this, you've got compliance, you've built authority, you're building bonding, you're showing all the things that you need to do by the time they're done with that three-part series, they should be fully uh, indoctrinated. Now, if you want another way to plus this series, you can see there is a PPS down here where you can say, if you have a second, I'd love to know, why'd you subscribe? You know, what can we do to help you solve your biggest problem right now, right? Just reply and actually have them reply to an actual email address. If you will do this, you will find you'll have your, your most excited people raise their hand. Certainly if you're an enterprise uh, sales business where you have a sales floor that can and will follow up, this little PPS is very effective. But if you're not in a position to do that, leave this off. This is here really mostly to, as a segmentation device. Um, still, deploy this perfect welcome mail. Uh, deploy a two-part, you know, deploy two more emails afterwards for a full three-part series. If you do that, you will have fully indoctrinated subscribers to your list.